Good morning, and welcome to Silverside Sunday Morning for October the 25th, 2020. The oddest thing happened to me during this week amid one of the most highly polarized times that I have ever consciously lived through. And I'm still stunned. Since last I saw you, the Pope, Pope Francis, has become the first Pope in history to endorse same-gender civil unions. He has not yet endorsed same-gender marriages, though that already has become a topic of conversation in Vatican circles, but this is huge. It's huge. And the quote that he gave, uh, which you see on the screen here, is very significant and very logical uh, and very compassionate uh, and very down to earth, which suits Pope Francis to a T. Homosexual people have the right to be in a family. They are children of God. You can't kick somebody out of a family nor make their life miserable for this. What we have to have is a civil union law. That way, homosexual people are legally covered. Before becoming Pope, Francis was uh, the Archbishop of Buenos Aires, and he was very public about his endorsement of civil union laws there and then. It was no secret that this was the position he held when he was selected as Pope. It's entirely something else, however, to be selected or placed in a position of extraordinary influence and power and still take a very unpopular position, a position that many of your constituents you know, you know, a, a number of people who are your constituents who must who must uh, uh, have some interaction with your leadership are going to absolutely detest. Indeed, he will suffer pushback on this, but his courage and his pastoral compassion. Indeed, his determination to be a follower of Jesus outweigh all the rest. Already licking their chops in anticipation of having Amy Comey Barrett as a colleague on the Supreme Court, Associate Justices Alito and Thomas have let it leak, and I stress let it leak, uh, that they have an interest in revisiting the law that made gay marriage legal in the United States. Obviously, they don't want to revisit it for fun uh, or to uh, underscore the benefits to the country that law permitted. Uh, they wish to uh, come to uh, to a means of undoing the law, which would be a colossal mess, not only a huge Im immoral uh, st st stance. It continues to befuddle me why uh, anybody has a strong interest in, not, in, not even a strong interest, has any interest in who is married to whom as long as the people who are married to each other are consenting adults. Hmm? Um, <clears throat> much more destruction is caused in terms of uh, uh, harm to families and individuals by straight couples who cheat on each other and uh, leave families, including children, in tatters. 
than by anything that's happened by allowing gay people to have marital rights and therefore share legal privileges together. Uh, this this is uh, this is a nonsense uh, a nonsense thing. Um, Judge Stapleton used to serve with uh, Justice Alito on the Court of Appeals. He has tremendous respect for Alito. Uh, at least he did until he joined the Supreme Court. I haven't asked him how he feels about. Alito's performance on the Supreme Court. But, but my assessment is that Alito is uh, kind of a, uh, a handful of agenda persons and a predictable vote when key issues come up. So I appreciate tremendously St. Francis, excuse me, Pope Francis's position. It's powerful, it's very important. Roman Catholics and others need to heed it and pay attention to it. And marriage needs to follow in Roman Catholic tradition. I'm not saying Roman Catholics haven't uh, already gone out and and gotten married, gay Roman Catholics haven't already gone out and gotten married legally in, in civil ceremonies. But if they want a, a, a sacred blessing, um, they, should, they should be able to get that. I performed a gay marriage for a Catholic priest and his partner some years ago, right in the sanctuary of Silverside Church. And I'm glad I did. I'm honored that I was asked and very proud to serve a church that allows me to make those kinds of decisions without repercussion. Our first reading this morning comes from former New Jersey Governor James McGreevy. He writes, we need to seek wise leaders who will seek common ground among Americans instead of dividing us further for political gain. As citizens, we must embrace those who embrace ideas, thoughtfulness, civility, and kindness to others no matter what their political beliefs. Billy Graham's granddaughter, one of Billy Graham's granddaughters, whose name is Jerusha Duford, has come out very publicly 
recently, I, I think, uh, saying she's voting for Biden. And she is very uh, openly encouraging others to do the same. She is her own woman. She makes very clear in interviews and speaking engagements that she does not claim to be speaking for her grandfather. She, she's not claiming that he endorses the position that she is taking or any of the positions that she takes. She nonetheless is very clear on this and she's calling others, particularly evangelical women, to stand with her and vote for Biden. Jerusha Duford is the daughter of Ruth and Billy Graham, the firstborn child of Ruth and Billy Graham. Uh, she doesn't claim to be speaking for her mother. I don't know what position her mother takes on any of these issues. She certainly does not claim to be speaking for her uncle Franklin Graham, whose most recent public act was to schedule some sort of a prayer march in Washington uh, on the day that uh, Justice Ginsburg was being laid to rest. It was, it was heinous. So in her own words, and I would encourage you to, to read more from her because it's very important that uh, this person rather far along on the religious right is saying some things that so many of us on the left can uh, agree with in political uh, rallies and even at church. There's some hope for unity when we can find common ground and I thought common ground was all gone, honestly. One of my grandfather's favorite verses was Micah 6, 8, in which we are told that the Lord requires of his people to do justly, to love kindness and mercy, and to walk humbly. These are the attributes of our faith we should present to the world. We can no longer allow our church leaders to represent our faith so erroneously. And she goes on to say, my faith and my church have become a laughing stock. And any attempt by its members to defend the actions of Trump at this time sound hollow and insincere. Amen to that. This is current stuff. The picture is four plus years old, but this is current stuff. I watched our president walk through Lafayette Square in D.C. after uh, the tear gassing of peaceful protesters for a photo op. He held a Bible, something so sacred to all of us, yet he treated that Bible with a callousness that would offend anyone intimately familiar with the words inside the Bible. He believed that action would honor him and only him. However, the church, designed to honor God, said nothing. She may mean immediately said nothing. In fact, the church did speak out. <laughs> I spoke out. Uh, admittedly, not many people hear when I speak out, but I did. But more importantly, the Episcopal Bishop of Washington, D.C. spoke out. But the people on the religious right discredited her immediately as somebody not worthy of speaking about faith matters because they said she's a lesbian. Jerusha Duford speaks about a lot of social justice issues that many of us are interested in and that we want solutions for. She says, I genuinely wish the Democratic Party would have a greater value for life inside the womb. And that, by the way, is an overgeneralization that all Democrats uh, are careless about abortion and uh, want it uh, used as, as callously as anybody wants. Not true. Um, but uh, let me proceed. Yet I equally wish the Republican Party would place a greater value on life outside the womb. You cannot choose just one and define yourself as pro 
life. Boy, is that a powerful insight and proclamation. All the people lined up, all the Roman Catholics lined up to protest abortion uh, and with no thought and no plan for what happens to these babies who were born into abusive homes. That is an overgeneralization. Some Roman Catholics have a plan for that, but not, not all, maybe not many. For me, Jerusha Duford says, pro-life is does not just mean life inside the womb. It's things we've talked about at the border. She's very concerned about kids in cages and the 500 plus children who now can't be matched up with their parents. They, 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 they've lost connections to their parents after all these months, years in those cages. Healthcare, poverty, homelessness, if you're concerned about life inside the womb, then you have to be concerned about these things outside the womb. All of those things, if you're going to be pro-life, you need to be pro-adoption and pro-foster care. Amen to that. Donald Trump could have upheld faith in America. He could have lifted up what's good and true about our faith. Instead, he has used Christianity for his own purposes. He does not value faith, not really. Look who he surrounded himself with. You need to send in that $100,000 check. Christians don't need Trump to save them. The truth is that Trump needs Christians to save his flailing campaign. Ask yourself, is our culture healthier or more broken after the last four years? Are we more unified or divided? And are we more or less of a Christian nation? Mr. President, the days of using our faith for your benefit are over. We know you need the support of Christians like us to win this election, but you can't have it. Not our vote, not our faith. Not our faith is responsible for the content of this advertising. As I said, when I sent this video out uh, as a, uh, an e-blast this week, it doesn't um, embrace um, in full separation of synagogue, church, mosque, and state, constitutionally speaking. It does not. But it is an incredibly progressive, brave move to confront the religious right, which has gotten on the bandwagon with Trump because he lets them get by with their uh, rebranding of Christianity. He lets them think that their Americanism is Christianity. He lets them think their xenophobia, their anti-immigrant attitudes are Christian. He lets them think that their racism is Christian uh, and they have been lapping it up like thirsty dogs. So this is courageous on their part. Ultimately, there should be gentle support of religion by the government as long as religion doesn't do anything that harms people. Uh, and religion has the right to support government uh, as long as government doesn't interfere in the practice of religion. But when religion and government become bedfellows, Terrible, terrible things, always, and it's difficult in this world to use the words always and never, but always ensue. Our second reading this morning comes from the epistle of First Peter, and it clearly, of course, is to a religious setting, a church setting, but in 
indeed could apply to secular settings, including political settings. Finally, he says, all of you have unity of mind, sympathy, sisterly and brotherly love, a tender heart, and a humble mind. I heard about this amazing um, editorial that had been written by Admiral William McRaven, retired Admiral William McRaven. Before I had a chance to read the editorial, I stumbled across an interview with uh, the Admiral uh, by uh, Jake Tapper. And I was blown away by the intelligence and insight of this person who has uh, put his life on the line any number of times uh, for the sake of defending democracy. And even if you're not someone who believes in um, uh, war, um, you have to admire someone who does put her or his life on the line uh, when there is an imminent threat. Uh, so this guy is the guy. And uh, yeah, if I were Biden, I would be <laughs> thinking of Secretary of Defense right here. Um, here's some quotes. He is, I believe, voted on the Republican side most of his life. And I could care less. Let me say this. I could care less about our two-party system. I would happily vote for a Republican today if I thought a Republican could fix the mess that we are in. I think part of the problem that we have is that we are a two-party system. But I would vote for the person, the leader, who could fix things, not for the party. Uh, in this case, it is, uh, it is not a party I favor. Uh, it's a person I happen to uh, believe in and a person uh, that I happen to be opposing with every uh, ounce of energy within me, in part because of my faith. And that's a personal word. I cannot encourage you to vote for a particular candidate. That is not what I'm supposed to be doing here. I can tell you what I'm doing. I can encourage you to vote. I cannot encourage you to vote for my candidate, but I can tell you some things about why I am in favor of a particular person when I think moral and ethical issues are at stake and actually the survival of the country. So anyway, McRaven has impressed the hell out of me. I am a pro-life, pro-Second Amendment, small government, strong defense, and a national anthem standing conservative. He puts it right out there. But I also believe that black lives matter, that dreamers deserve a path to citizenship, that diversity and inclusion are essential to our national success, that education is the great equalizer, that climate change is real, and that the First Amendment is the cornerstone of our democracy. Mercy. Most important, I believe that America must lead in the world with courage, conviction, and a sense of honor and humility. Wow. The time has come in our gathering for the lifting up of prayers and positive thoughts. Please join me as we pray. You are praying in your way, and I lead us in prayer in one of the ways that I pray. Gracious God, though for purposes of protection and respect, religion and politics must not be one and the same, 
And yet, we should be doing a much better job allowing them to influence each other for the better and the betterment of our citizens and the betterment of humankind, the betterment of humanity. We spend an enormous amount of money and a, a humiliating amount of money on elections while people that we claim we want to help in our political speeches are starving literally to death. And children who were separated from their parents by the current political administration perhaps are permanently separated from their mothers and fathers. And we have time to get on political bandwagons and make political contributions. We are so confused. We bark up wrong trees. We follow wrong pathways. We are so easily led astray and so easily caught off guard and so easily confused. It's so easy to get our attention with things that don't matter. We would, starting with our own congregation and moving out from there, build better bridges find common ground on which we can make society and the world better places. We would find reasons to uplift each other and fewer reasons to put each other down. We would talk about the things that we agree on and stop worrying about the things that we disagree about. As far as those of us who claim to be followers of Jesus, there's so much that requires no debate whatsoever. There's no complicated scriptural interpretation, no need to understand context, no need for refined theological debate or even the involvement of professional theologians though we don't want to uh, forget about theologians altogether. <laughs> but the things about which we need to be investing our time in order to make the world a better place are abundantly clear. And there should be a limitless amount of issues on which we can agree in making the world a better place. It shouldn't require a political contest for us to evaluate where we stand and for us to be willing to compromise and for us to be willing to join arms with those uh, with whom we don't agree about a whole lot, but we agree about enough. Amen.